Okay, this uh, session we're going to go ahead and calibrate a capacitance manometer for use with uh, making Nixie tubes. Uh, as it turns out, if you have high vacuum gauges for making vacuum tubes, uh, all of the gauges run out of range when you get up into the pressures that you would use uh, when making Nixie tubes. Uh, typically, 100 microns is the maximum you would ever use with a vacuum tube. Um, you might go up to one tor if you're making a gas tube. But uh, to go up into the 10, 20, 30 tor range, uh, you don't ever do that in vacuum tubes. So um, if you're going to make Gessler tubes or if you're going to make um, Nixie tubes, you have to have gauge that's going to measure uh, from one tor up to about 100 tor. It makes a good range. Uh, that'll cover all of the pressures that you would be likely to use in uh, plasma globes, um, Gessler tubes, Nixie tubes, things like that. However, um, you know, buying these gauges can be very expensive, so we, we can go ahead and we can build one and come out way ahead money-wise. Now, what we have for a transducer, this is a Robert Shaw 1000 tor full scale capacitance manometer. Now what it does is it gives a voltage output of 0 to 5 volts for a pressure change of 0 to atmospheric. Um, you can tell by that range that we're not going to have an even number of millivolts so we can't just take a digital meter and connect it straight to it and have it read out tor directly. So we gr we're going to have to screw around with the scale to make it li read linearly on our digital gauge. Now, for a digital gauge, we've taken a little uh, cheap Chinese um, panel meter. They work excellently. These are absolutely the bargain of the life. They're, they're about ten bucks and they're a three and a half digit meter. They're accurate to one digit. Um, you know, the, the accuracy of it is set by the integrated circuit, so it's not um, something that uh, can be, you know, fooled up by uh, poor workmanship or something like that. But this is an excellent meter. They're easy to modify. You can make them read any voltage from uh, 100, uh, 200 millivolts full scale up to 20 volts is what this one was originally. And it's very easy to modify them. You can turn the decimal points on and off very easily. It's all straightforward inside there on how to do it. So we took that meter and we made, I don't know if this will focus right, we made a little circuit with an op amp and a couple of um, trim pots. We have one of them for offset on the very low end and the other for the span, the, the full scale. So it's just a very simple circuit using an op amp. We have offset and gain is all we have. Very simple, anybody can do it. Uh, we made it on a piece of perf board. We didn't even make a uh, circuit board for this. It was just too too simple. We wanted to just get this done. Uh, we have a power transformer that uh, is rectified uh, with a couple of uh, uh, some diodes and capacitors to make us our power supply for the meter, which is 12 volts, and the power for the uh, bar bar uh, baritron, which is um, uh, 24 volts. Now. We have this connected to a two-stage rotary pump for our vacuum. We have a needle valve connected to it so that we can bleed air in very carefully. This, this is very fine control needle valve so we can control it. This is pretty important. Now, if you use just a plain shutoff valve, it gets very, very sensitive when you're measuring one or two tor. I mean, it, it, you're, you're just going from atmospheric down to one tor, so the slightest touch of the valve makes it uh, you know, change pressure to it terrifically. So you want a nice uh, tapered needle point on the uh, valve so that you have a very smooth control. Okay, then we tee that off. We have one going to the uh, capacitance manometer and we have the other one going through a hose to a, let me see if I can get back and get this in the picture. It's, it's tall. This is a, what's called a, a U-tube manometer. This was the very first vacuum gauge that was ever made back in the 1500s or something like that. And um, what we have is a U-tube made out of Pyrex glass and in it is we have we have mercury, the columns of mercury. Now we make the column of mercury from the ground all the way up to the top greater than 15 inches. The atmospheric pressure is 30 inches uh, 
of, of mercury, so, which means that if we pull a perfect vacuum in the tube, atmospheric pressure will push down with enough pressure to lift the mercury 30 inches, 30.6 inches. So we have to make sure that we have more than 15 inches of mercury here. We've got about 17 inches of mercury, so that means that the pressure will not bleed through and bubble over and, and cause trouble. Okay? We have a meter sticks here, here, which is calibrated in millimeters. So this will make it to where we can read millimeters of mercury, which is what we're doing. One millimeter of mercury is equal to one tor, or 1,000 microns. It's, it's very straightforward. I don't know what the equivalent is in Pascals. It's, it's some oddball number that's hard to remember. Um, okay. What we'll do first is we'll start the pump up. And we see that the mercury has come up in the tube. And we have it zeroed here. I don't know if I can get in close. This, is, this camera doesn't really get too close to focus. We have it zeroed at 20. Um, okay, I'm going to close the valve all the way. Okay, we now have the valve all the way closed, the bleed valve. And we see that our mercury is exactly at the 20 maybe a little bit above so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna push that ruler up a little okay that's close enough for what we're doing okay now if we look at our meter we're reading one tor okay we're sitting at zero since we don't have any pressure in it we have the vacuum all the way down at probably 50 microns right now we want the gauge to read zero so I'm going to take the zero adjust and I'm going to set it to zero. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to the full scale. Now we're going to make full scale on this one about 100 tor. So that would be 10 of these divisions. So that would be 10 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, which would be right here. So I'm going to open the valve, and the mercury will then go 100 millimeters, which means that we have 100 millimeters of pressure in the other side of the tube. Okay, here goes. I'm turning the valve several turns. It's a very, very fine valve. Okay, now we're starting to go down. Okay, now. It has a little bit of surging in it because I don't have a pinhole in it. You can either stuff some uh, cotton into the end of the other side of the tube or you can make a little pinhole plug out of a, a cork and that'll make it to where it doesn't surge as much. Okay, we're sitting right on 100. Okay, we look at our meter. We're reading 129. So I'm going to take the full scale reading, the, the span, and I'm going to adjust that trim pot to get us a hundred. Okay. Now, we'll go back and we're going to take the pressure back to zero and then we'll set the zero again. See if it's changed. Just close the valve all the way off. Alright, we let it stabilize. Okay, I can see we're right on. Okay, now we're going to look here, and I'm going to set that right to zero. We want it to be just at the point where it's between zero and one. Okay, now that sets the bottom end. Now let's go ahead and look at several points along the scale and see how accurate it is. Okay, I'm going to go to... Uh, 10 
millimeters. Okay, I can see right now we're off by one millimeter on the zero point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to readjust the position of the of the ruler to the mercury column to make sure that we're correct. Okay, now I've got that set right on the money now. Okay, let's go ahead and let's go down to 10 microns, I mean 10 millimeters, 10 tor, and we'll see what the meter reads. Now opening up the valve, it's dropping down. Okay. All right, here we are at five. Right on the money. All right, let's take her down. Okay, there's ten. Right on the money. All right, let's go down to twenty. Let's see. Well, we go to thirty. Here's thirty. Skip 20. I went a little too far, but it doesn't matter. Okay, reading 29. Okay, that's right close. All right, let's go to 40. Let's go to 50. Okay, that's 70, 69, looks like we're off by one on the high end, we'll set that out of there, let's go 80, 90, here we go 100 again, okay, we're right on 100, okay, I'm just going to take that and I'm going to bump that up by one, okay, now that should make them all accurate, all right, let's continue on down, let's go to, um, 200 and see what happens. Let me see. That's 100, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Okay, 200 is going to be right at the bottom of the ruler, which makes sense. <laughs> Look at that within one count. So, what we've done is we've used a mercury column manometer, a YouTube manometer, to go ahead and calibrate our digital gauge to an accuracy of one tor. I mean, that's all you can expect from this type of a manometer. Um, a, 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 a manometer that reads from uh, one tor to 1,000 tor, which is what this one is, will give you three decades of, of measurement. So. 1,000 down to 100 is the first decade, 100 down to 10 is the second, and 10 down to 1 is the third decade. You cannot expect it to go lower than that. The linearity simply isn't there. So we now have a digital gauge that is completely suitable for measuring pressure from 1 tor to 200 tor. Um, the thing about a capacitive manometer over a Perani gauge or a thermocouple gauge is first off it is not subject to changes in temperature. This unit is calibrated in temperature so that if we have a, an ambient temperature change we don't get a drift in the zero. If you use a thermocouple gauge or if you use a Perani gauge you'll have a slight drift from using it in the summertime to using it in the wintertime. So unless you have your, your shop very carefully uh, regulated in temperature, which I don't. My shop varies from uh, you know, 30 degrees in the winter to 100 degrees in the summer, so the gauge goes all over the place if you don't have it temperature compensated. 
Um, so you want to use a capacitance manometer for, for best accuracy there. Now a second problem with the thermocouple and the Peranti gauge is that the type of gas will cause the reading to change because all gases do not have the same heat conductivity. So you can have the same pressure with neon and you'll get a slightly different pressure reading than if you have air. So if we're calibrating this on air, which we're doing right now, and we were to use pure neon, which we'd be doing if we're using a, a Nixie tube, then we would have a change in the pressure that would be different, corresponding to the difference in thermal conductivity of the neon with respect to air. And it, this can get very serious for gases like helium. It, it can be, you know, a, a four to one, I think, helium is. You, you can get a reading that's four to one off. So, so you could be reading four uh, tor and you'd really have one tor in actual pressure. So um, the, there's a, a significant error in the Perani gauge and the thermocouple gauge which is not present in a, in a uh, capacitance manometer because the gas never is the type of gas does not make any difference. We're simply using the pressure to push on a, a diaphragm. So the absolute pressure is what's being measured. Okay, well that's how you would calibrate um, a gauge. You could do this same exact thing with a Perani gauge if you're going to use one or with a thermocouple gauge. You would make a circuit that has a zero adjust and a full scale adjust and then you would just go between two points on your, on your um, YouTube manometer and you would set the full scale for the maximum and you'd set the zero for the minimum. And you can get the digits uh, even with a thermocouple gauge, over a range of 100 tor, you could get it to where it would read within one digit or maybe two digits, which would be completely satisfactory for Nixie tube work. Okay, that's it for this video.